Helldivers new orders have come down from command, chargers get a huge nerf, and overall the game is just a bit easier. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and let's dive in with some exciting Helldivers 2 news. You no doubt have heard that a huge Helldivers 2 patch has gone live, and it's a big deal guys, because the devs seem to have heard the community and made some pretty sizable adjustments to the game after droves of players pointed out some of the challenges and issues with the harder difficulties. So here's the good news. The team has reduced the spawn rate of Chargers and Bile Titans on difficulty seven and up. In addition, they also reduce the risk of spawn spikes of Chargers and Bile Titans. They go on to explain that players should expect other enemy types to appear in greater numbers instead. Now we dove into some Helldive level nine difficulty missions as soon as humanly possible because we really wanted to test the waters of what's going on with the game. And I'm happy to report that things feel great. It actually feels like a pre railgun nerf level of difficulty. And a large reason for that is the spawn adjustments. Now let's not kid ourselves. We're still dealing with multiple bile titans, chargers, and an ungodly amount of other enemies like hunters at points, but it's nowhere near as egregious as it was. And there's some other changes that make this all a bit more bearable. So here's the second major change. The team stated they are not changing anything regarding the chargers legs, but are lowering the health of the Charger's head. They go on to say it should now be at a point where a well-placed shot from a recoilless rifle or EAT-17 instantly kills a Charger. They continue with additional context, stating that together with the undocumented change of last patch that increased the armor penetration ability of less well-placed shots from the EAT-17 and recoilless rifle, Chargers should now be easier to handle by well-equipped and coordinated groups. Again, it's all good news on this front because as you know, if you watched our support build video from back around launch time, I am a huge Recoilless fan. So I strapped on the backpack and dove in to find out for myself. Gotta tell you guys, it's as smooth as butter killing these big old bastards now, and I couldn't be happier. One well-placed shot to the face and a Charger's entire head explodes. The same thing happens with the EAT, which Schmo tested out in parallel. We also took a few shots with the XO-45's rockets and we came to a similar conclusion. It's about two shots per charger if you're accurate. Long story short, this is a game changer. And as long as one person is running with an anti-tank option, you're absolutely in business. Combined with the restructured spawn rates and things on the terminated side finally feel well balanced. Obviously the focus is primarily on the terminated side at this moment. And the team doesn't go into any details about the automaton front, but I'm sure that pendulum will swing back once a major order drives the bulk of the community there. There's one other thing of note from the patch, and I just wanted to call it out in case you missed it. The electronic countermeasures operation modifier, which had a chance of giving you a random stratagem instead of the one you input has been removed in order to be reworked and will be reintroduced in a future iteration. The team says that players found this modifier wasn't communicated clearly enough and overall caused more frustration than excitement with the way it was implemented. The change was actually made in patch 1.000.100, but was unintentionally omitted from the patch notes. They've really got to clean up these patch notes. It's not the end of the world, but this stuff is clearly important to players and it's happened now multiple times. It would be great for them to really iron out this process, especially with more content coming down the pike and the clear continued interest in the game. So that patch is great, small but mighty, and that's perfectly fine, especially with the Cutting Edge Warbond coming in just days. But that's not all. No, the CEO of Arrowhead Game Studios took to Twitter to address some of the recent leaks that have been swirling around. He said, I've heard rumors of flying bugs in at Helldivers 2. I want to officially refute such preposterous claims. Everyone knows that bugs can't fly, and I'm not alone in thinking this. The Ministry of Truth agrees that this is propaganda from bug sympathizers that want to brainwash. Now, of course, he's referring to the leaked images of a flying terminated enemy that were making the rounds online, and it's certainly not lost on me that he's clearly joking around, because as we know from his past statements, he's not afraid to tease ahead of content coming to the game. So there you have it, folks. All but confirmation that flying bugs are coming to Helldivers 2 at some point. In this case, I think the propaganda is right. As a matter of fact, if you missed our video the other day breaking down a ton of leaks, we compiled so much stuff into our 10 minute video, far more than almost anyone I've seen on YouTube. So if you want a good idea with some high quality images and gameplay of what's to come, check that out. 
But friends, there is still more because a new major order has come down. The orders are clear. We're to hell dive down to the barrier planets and activate the Terminid control systems. Now, RP aside, this introduces a new mission into the game, and I absolutely love it. It's everything you love and hate about defense missions rolled into one, and we had an absolute blast taking this on with virtually no knowledge of the encounter on the Helldive difficulty. The concept is pretty straightforward. You need to activate the Terminid control system, and to do that, you have to activate and then defend three massive silos that are scattered around the map. If enough enemies attack the silo during your defenses, it stops progress and you have to restart that stage of the mission. Truthfully, it was a great combination of point defense and scale. The entire mission doesn't just revolve around one location, you have to physically move as a team to three separate spots, and that's something that really helps make the mission feel more dynamic. It's also crucial to really map out a game plan with your team because those silos get attacked from at least four directions. It required a huge coordinated effort, and this is where we really started to notice the spawn changes. A manageable amount of Bile Titans and Chargers, but an absolute ton of smaller enemies that almost never seemed to stop. Ultimately, this is one of the best missions the team has added to the game thus far, but I can see how it might be an absolute nightmare with a pug. It required a ton of coordination just to scrape through, but we also weren't optimized for the task. Turrets, mechs, wave clear, those types of stratagems would have made a huge difference, and we really weren't kitted out for that. We were kitted out for mass bile titan and charger clear, which really wasn't necessary. Overall though, we had a ton of fun. Friends, a lot continues to happen in the world of Helldivers 2. We cannot wait to dive into the new Cutting Edge Warbond with you all on March 14th. New weapons, boosters, grenades, you name it, we will be checking it out here on the channel. So if you like our videos and you want to stay in the know on all things Helldivers 2, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.